right, so uh, I hope that everyone uh, fired up SolidWorks. So let's go ahead to File, New, and open up a part. So let me just go back a second. So I'm going to go to File, New. So if you hover over the SolidWorks, you can see File, click on New, and open up parts. OK? Now, what we're going to go through today is basically what is included in uh, the first lecture on Blackboard. So if you go to Blackboard, you will notice that you have uh, lecture one, homework one kind of deal. Okay. Now, in addition to that, I really want you to do the, to do the tutorials. So the tutorial is going to be part of your homework. And I'm going to actually update uh, Blackboard right after class in order to make sure that the tutorial is part of your grade. Okay. So that's going to be a mandatory thing for you to do. So in case you guys forgot how to access the tutorials, we're going to click on the home icon that is on the side here. So if you click on the home icon, and then we're going to click on tutorials. So this will open up some of the tutorials that are available in SolidWorks. Now we, you have to do two tutorials. So if you go to getting started, the first tutorial that you have to do is introduction to SolidWorks. This should take you about an hour. You can see that clock uh, there, and that represents how, how long this tutorial should take. And the second tutorial that I want you to do is called lesson one parts. Okay, so those are mandatory for you to actually begin with before you begin on your engine. There are some things that are mentioned in these tutorials that will help you do the engine that I will not mention in class. Okay, all right, so we can go ahead and close these. So th these are the first two homework problems. So now we have two things. Okay, and I'll go through the rest in a second. So when we come here, a quick review this is the design area. This is called the design feature tree, right? And this is called the main toolbar. Now, what are the three main planes that we talked about last time? You can go ahead and say it. You don't have to raise your hand. Exactly. So top, front, right. So those are the, the three main orthographic uh, planes. And I can see them here. I can see front, top, and right. OK? Great. So now we're gonna, what we're going to do is start with a simple rectangle uh, and then try to make it a box. And from there, try to add some relations um, and hopefully give you some idea of how to do uh, trims for your flywheel, right? Because the flywheel has kind of that, that nice notch in the center. Okay, so we're going to have to get some idea of how to do that. Okay, so let's go ahead and start from the front plane. And I'm going to go ahead and open um, the part drawing. And we're going to open up the engine base. So the reason I open up the drawing is because it's very important to me that when you finish the part, that the isometric view that you see from the homework which is here, is similar to the isometric view that you see from the part that you just created. Okay? So for example, if your engine is oriented completely different, right? like those pins are pointing down, or those pins are pointing here to the front, that means you, you chose your, your planes wrong. So we talked about that this plane is the top plane, this plane is the front plane, and this plane is the right plane. That means if we decide to, to start a rectangle from the front plane, we have to use those dimensions, and we have to select the front plane in SOLIDWORKS. Okay? So I hope that everyone is clear on that. I know that I covered some of these topics last week. I just want to make sure that everyone's on the same page, because this is kind of like the legit introduction, so to speak, Okay? after you struggle through it in the weekend. Now, so we're going to go ahead and select the front plane. Now, in order to see, notice how the front plane is kind of like oblique. So I'm going to click on the space bar, normal 2. Now, just uh, to give you a quick uh, review, if you hit on the space bar, that's your orientation window. So notice that you can see all the planes and all the views. But when you hit, if you double click on normal 2, you'll notice that the plane is right in your face. Okay, so it's directly projected uh, on that plane. Now we're going to go to the sketch tab. And under the sketch tab, we're going to have uh, many options to draw any shape. Right? So since our engine base is actually made of a rectangle, so let's go ahead and click on rectangle for that. And we're going to draw our first rectangle. So remember, let me go back a second. So I'm going to hit Control Z. Remember, SOLIDWORKS is an on-off system. What that means, if I click on rectangle, what I have to do is I always have to start from the origin. Starting from the origin makes my sketch has some sort of a reference. So I'm going to hover over the origin, and you're going to see there's an orange dot with that yellow square next to it. What do we call that yellow square? A relation box, right? So basically, if I, what this 
yellow square is telling me by having two lines and a green dot on them, it's telling me that the, the rectangle corner or the vertex of the rectangle is coincident with the, with the origin. Okay? So now we're going uh, we're gonna to click on the origin. And remember, SOLIDWORKS is an on-off system. So we click and we release, right? I just released. And then I'm going to move my mouse in order to draw some sort of a rectangle. And then once I feel that the rectangle looks good, then I'm going to click again. And then hit Escape. Remember, you can use the, the scroll wheel on your mouse to zoom in and out. If you end up losing, like losing a file or losing a part in SOLIDWORKS space, all you have to do is there's a first magnifying glass here that's called Zoom to Fit. So if you click on that, it will actually scale back your sketch so you can see it on the window. Yes? Instead of hitting Escape, can you just click on the page outside the part? Yes, you can click on the check mark. There's many different things, but w w when you start using SOLIDWORKS for a long time, you will, you will realize that your hands end up being positioned in the, in the format of your right hand on the mouse and your left hand on the uh, space bar, like your thumb on the space bar, and actually your pinky on the Escape. So <laughs> after you practice enough, you're going to see that. So that for me, it's a lot easier to hit Escape. Um, in, if you just, if you, are you mechanical? Electrical. So if you decide to take ECE 216, um, then what we do is I'll show you how to basically hotkey the keyboard, right? But the reason I don't show it to you here because sometimes you might get frustrated and you might hotkey the keyboard for someone else in such a way that the spacebar will delete their part. So that's just you being mean. Okay, so I'm not going to teach you that for now because you just don't understand the power that you have in your hand. Okay? So. Uh, so ad, as of this point, last time we talked about different line types. So what are the two colors that we see here? Black and blue, right? And, and what, are, what is the good color that we're going for? Black, Black right? And the blue, what does the blue mean? Undefined. undefined, exactly. So another way of looking at it is I can look here on the bottom. I can see that it says underdefined, okay? So when it says underdefined, that means, hey, this sketch is not, is not fully fixed yet because I can grab this and I can move this around and this makes sense. Now, when I get to this stage, or even before I drew my first sketch on there, there was a very important thing that I have to choose. What was that? Units, right? Because this could be inches, this could be metric, this could be millimeters, this could be meters, centimeters, whatever it is. So we have to make sure that our units are actually verified. So we're going to go to that, to that sheet on the top that says Option, and we're going to click on it. So click on the drop-down menu and then hit Options. Then we're going to go to the Document Properties tab. Okay, and then we're going to go to Units. And we're going to make sure that we're inches, pounds, second, right? Because the entire engine is made in inches, pounds, second. And then we're going to hit OK. So this makes sure that the entire, um, the entire sketch is done in inches. Now, I told you that there's, one, there's two ways of figuring out that a sketch is underdefined. The first one, that the lines are blue. The second one is, it says on the bottom here, underdefined. The third one is, if I come here on the design feature tree, do you see that negative sign that is behind sketch one? That negative sign means that the sketch is still flexible. And the way that you can remember it is, if there's a negative sign in front of a sketch, that represents a negative sign on my total grade. Very simple, right? It's, it's kind of like an equal thing. Okay. Now, how do we make this fully defined? Yeah. Uh, smart dimension. Exactly. So we're going to go to smart dimension. And let's go back to the drawing. What do you think is the size if I'm drawing from the front? <coughs> so it's 15.9, right? Because that's the exterior one. And then 6. So the length is 15.9 and the height is 16 inches. So I'm going to go to smart dimension. I'm going to type 15.9 here, and I'm going to type 6 here. And again, remember, SOLIDWORKS is an on-off system. So we're going to click on Smart Dimension. We're going to come here. We're going to click on the edge. So release the click, move over, and then click again. And then we're going to type this is to be 6. OK? Is everyone on the same page? Great. OK. So from here, what we can do can we determine that this is a fully defined sketch? OK, so great. So remember the steps that we discussed. Step one was select a plane. Step two, draw a sketch. Step three, make sure that the sketch is fully defined. Step four, design a feature. OK, so we just finished the first three steps. Now we're getting ready to design a feature. 
So we're going to go to Features. And if we want to add material, it's called Extrude Boss Base. If we want to take away material, it's Extrude Cut. Now, since we don't have any material there as of this point, the Extrude Cut option is not even available, right? You cannot take material out of, out of nothing. So the, our only option is Extrude Boss Base. So we're going to go ahead and click on Extruded Boss Base. And then we're going to come here. Now, blind means that you know exactly how thick this piece is. Okay. Now, right before blind, you can see that you have an arrow, a blue arrow. If I click on the blue arrow, this, this determines whether this guy is going to be moving forward or backwards. Okay. And how do we determine that? Because if I come here to my drawing, I can see that if this is my front plane, should I be moving backwards or forwards? Doesn't really matter, right? Uh, it's, a, it's, it's a rectangle, yeah, you're going straight. That was a trick question. That was going to be on the quiz that JD wanted to give, but I'm like, oh. okay. So how, do you, how thick do you think this, this box is, or this base is? Six? Where did you get that number from? So the, from the right drawing, I can see that this is six, right? Because everything is oriented nicely. Everything is projected, just like we talked about last time. Okay, so we're going to put six here, and we're going to hit enter, and we're going to click check mark. Okay? Now, notice what happens. Every sketch can only be used for one feature. So the sketch that we just drew, do you, know, do you notice here in the design feature tree, if I click on the plus sign, do you see how that boss extrude one kind of like took in sketch one? Okay, so I cannot use sketch one for any, other, for any other feature. Now the cool thing is, let's say you made a mistake. Let's say instead of extrude boss base, you actually wanted to extrude cut. So all I have to do, I just click on here and I can hit delete and hit yes. But that will not delete my sketch. Okay? So let me control Z that. Uh, yeah, go for it. Yeah, it's pretty hot. Go for it. Oh, there's someone else. Yeah, you love him, man. I knew you were going to be trouble from day one. Me? <laughs> Just messing with you. Yeah. Were you were you out for a long time? I was out for like 15 minutes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so try to catch up. Can you please actually open the door? I'm like, it's really warm in here. <laughs> I love. I like how she clarified why she wanted to open the door. <laughs> <laughs> Will I get in trouble? Okay, so what do we have here? Um, oh, this is going to be interesting for the people watching the clip from the morning section. <laughs> do not come to class late. <laughs> okay, so what do we have here? Now we created this shape, but instead of having only the top, front, right as our main planes, now we have every single face of those as a plane. And remember, I can hold down my scroll, my scroll wheel and I can move this thing around. Right, and if, if in case it gets disoriented, all I have to do is just hit spacebar and isometric, and I'm back to the 3D view. Okay, is that clear? Do you guys have any questions? Yes. Um, did you click on the check mark on the side? Mm -hmm. So what do you see? Can I see what you see? Oh, just hit escape. Because you have it selected. Okay? So that's why I said escape is going to be like every time you want to exit out of something, you just hit escape. Okay? All right. So this view, this is a very important piece. This view is called isometric solid. Okay? So it's called isometric solid. The reason it's called isometric solid is because it's an isometric view. So, duh, that's the first piece, right? The second piece is. Because this is filled with solid, right? It's not see-through, so it's a, it's a solid view. Now, sometimes on the homework, I'll tell you, hey, I want you to turn it in, in hidden lines visible. 